the Catred.org podcast, your weekly guide to the world of esports news, presented by Richard Lewis. I returned from ESWC to be greeted by the sad news that one of my friends, Jonas Sonic Passas, had died tragically at the age of 24. Although a lot of people might not be familiar with him, uh, he was the Greek national CSS team captain and also the captain of uh, the most successful uh, Greek team, Delinquent Habits. I first met him when we were fellow captains in the Clan Base Nations Cup. And that was a good few years ago now. And since then we kept in regular contact. I was struck immediately by his positivity in dealing with a lot of issues. And he was someone who did a lot to promote esports, particularly in Greece, but also across Europe. Uh, we worked together, for example, on covering the Athens Gaming League, which is something he was instrumental in getting started. Um, he also ran a site called cssource.gr which was uh, about promoting the community side of the game. He worked in uh, the Battle.net internet station, Pukakia, in Athens. And he organised a lot of tournaments and brought a lot of people into the game. He was incredibly friendly, incredibly funny, incredibly intelligent and outgoing. And to come back after a a rough week uh, at ESWC and to hear that just really... You know, it's it's beyond anything. So, it's not much, I know. But uh, I'd like to dedicate this podcast, the CSWC special, uh, in his memory. And to all the people that knew him, his friends and his family, um, my thoughts and all the thoughts of the Cadred team uh, are with you in this difficult time. Okay, so how we did the podcast this week was we went out to ESWC and we decided at the end of each day we'd record our thoughts about the event, um, discussion about the big uh, results that had unfolded in each of the tournaments, and we'd talk to a few other people and get some sound uh, from the event itself. We would then come home and compile it. We had so much left over when putting this together it seemed the only sensible way to approach it was to put it into two parts rather than have you listen to one long uh, continuous stream of consciousness or babble depending on how you look at it ultimately for those who followed the competition live there might not be a lot of new stuff here but we would uh, like to think that there's going to be some information about ESWC that maybe wasn't conveyed in the coverage. There's also a lot of discussion regarding particular games, results, players, um, and how that ties into the scene in general. So we would like to think that there's going to be enough interesting content here in this podcast this week. The second part will be released probably in a few days after this one. So if you are thirsting for more, if you're a masochist or whatever, um, it will be out shortly and you'll be able to listen to it. However, for now, uh, we'll take you straight to the day one recap, which is with me, Richard Lewis, Tom Diablo Newman, the COD4 legend, and of course our StarCraft 2 editor, Jonas Strisland. Okay, it's the uh, end of day one. Uh, we've just got back to the hotel from ESWC, and what we're going to be doing each day, as I'm sure future me is going to explain before this segment, is we're going to recap the end of each day so it's fresh in our brain, and we're going to compile it all together to make kind of a retrospective podcast, but while it's actually happening, um, you can probably see a car's going past. We're in a pretty ghetto hotel, so if there's any background noise, I apologise. So yeah, the first day it's been all StarCraft 2 action, and before we start focusing on that, I do want to talk a little bit about how the event's been run. Um, I'm here with Jonas and uh, Tom, who've obviously been doing the coverage with me. Um, they're a little bit more inexperienced than me, so I think it's only fair they provide their opinions uh, first. Guys, how have you enjoyed the event? Day one. I'll start, I guess, uh, this is Tom, if you're unfamiliar with my voice. Uh, Jonas sounds a lot more Scandinavian. Um, <laughs> the event has been run. I don't know, it looks nice, but the back work is pretty wank. 
I mean, <laughs> like, for the press anyway, it's really trying to scrap together what you can to try and make things right. I mean, we haven't really been able to do a lot of coverage because they tell you to piss off before before the tournament's even finished. And I mean, trying to get all the services and stuff like internet cables and... I don't know, I think I think Richard's better off summing it up. Um, and also, just like, obscure things like security being so tight that you'd pass through like a gap and you can't go back through that gap. You've got to do a tour of the event before you can get back to where you were. Like, even if you were just literally... You can keep eye contact with the guy, but he won't let you back through that gap in case you've done something. Um, but... Uh, other than that, I don't, I, I don't, I don't really know overall. I mean, it is, it is fun doing the coverage, I guess, for me for the first time as well. Also, filming and stuff has been fun for me. So I don't know. I think it's been okay. I don't have that much to complain about, except what Tom said, and also this, in the StarCraft Two tournament, you have all the matches are played at once. So for the spectators at home, it's like you have to pick one out of twenty-four matches matches to watch. Because they don't divide it up. One match, you have like one round, an hour, and then you have two and a half hour break. One match, two and a half hour break, and then one match, and that's all we had today. So that's my biggest complaint to ESWC. So. Uh, like, it, it's kind of Tom's already touched on it for me. Like, I, I don't know about you boys, I, I think the fucking worst part about it just has been that you feel like you're kind of battling with the fucking organizers to try and do your job, you know? Like, you can't, or well, people don't realise that when you're doing coverage, and what nobody realises when you're out there is, like, there is this thing, you know, it's like the fucking, you know, it's like those undercurrents in the sea. You might look calm on the top, but the minute you go for a fucking swim, you're just dragged out and you're drowned and killed. Like, you know, and that's what coverage is like. Like, you only see the good stuff, the final product. You don't see how much work or how much fighting has gone into it. And, and for example, since we've got to the event today, I mean, I, I, again, it was well documented that our monitor blew up. I mean, so, you know, we couldn't use it. No problem. We'll get another one. Uh, the organizers did say they'd give us one. And that's brilliant. You know, I'm very grateful that they helped us out like that. But we had to wait for one to break in the, in the game tournament before we could get one. They weren't willing to give us one that wasn't broken, if you like. And by broken, I don't mean that it didn't work. It was just cosmetically fucked. It just wouldn't stand up. So we waited to get one. We got one. We then got told we had to give our passport in case we stole it, right, like, you know, we're official media partners, where do you guys think we're going to fucking go, do you know what I mean, like, it's not like you're going to struggle to find us, so we, we, we did that, and we agreed to that, and we got the monitor, and, you know, it, we didn't, didn't have a stand, but we made it work, we wedged it between some tables and propped it up, and that was fine, you know, and grateful, because without it, we wouldn't be able to do any video coverage at all, but then... It got to quarter to seven, and the tournament was due to finish at seven every night, and they said, you've got to leave the press area, because we've got an agreement that everyone's out by seven, and it's like, well, we're the press. I tried to explain how reporting wor works, and how it works is, you can only report on something that's happened. So the idea of reporting on something as it's happening is nonsense. You know, you can't do it. You've got to wait, and then you retrospectively write about it. So if they don't give you any time to do that, whatever happens in that last hour or so is, is fucked. You know, we've got to come back to a hotel, use some cheap Wi-Fi or whatever, can't upload videos. And that's frustrating. And, you know, there's just been lots of other things, like, you know, not providing internet cables, not, you know. Basically, the, the long story short, like, the, this is a far more impressive venue and there's more people here and bigger prize pots and... You know, it looks way better and way more equipped for esports. But in terms of what it's done for the press, it's like it's like being a war correspondent in fucking Vietnam. You know what I mean? I feel like I have to fucking have money on me at all times to bribe people to get stuff. But nobody will say this. Everyone will come away. All the other press guys will come away, and they'll be saying what a great time they had because they're scared about not being invited back. And I think that's horseshit. I think if you can't be honest about something, if you you know if you can't tell the truth about something when it fails, and you can't do it publicly, there's no 
There's no, uh, you know, onus on them to change it. Like, I, I'm arguing with these guys. Like, look, I want to do my job. I'm not here for a fucking jolly up, you know what I mean? I, I'd much rather be at home, but I'm here, I'm working, and it benefits both parties. It benefits our website, it benefits your tournament. So can we just have a, you know, this bare minimum? And, you know, they just didn't sit with grasp that. So it's been real hard, and this is only day one, like one full day for us. <laughs> So you can fucking imagine, like, I just hope it gets better, but obviously I'm going to probably listen back to this by the end, and either it's going to be worse, and I'm going to think, God, wasn't shit good on day one, <laughs> or, you know, or it's going to be, you know, they've sorted it, and I'm going to feel a prick for saying it, but the whole point of doing the podcast, the way we're going to do it this week, is to go, yeah, yeah say it as it is at the time, so. So anyway, enough whining. Uh, what about the action? Uh, Jonas, you're our StarCraft 2 expert. I mean, has there been any big shocks? Has there been any surprise results? Uh, any games that would, you would say were instant classics in the group stage? Well, I didn't get to watch that many matches. and That's a good start when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Find that out, though. You don't get to see anything. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's the other thing. When, you, when people think when you're doing coverage, you're actually... At best, you get to watch one game, like the one you write about, and everything else passes you by, but then you've still got to write about that as well. So you just have to kind of lie a little bit. No, we don't lie. <laughs> We don't lie. We don't make. We don't lie. Yeah, well, Jonas doesn't anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you know, people think you actually like doing coverage. It just becomes numbers and words, like with with very little context. Yeah, you don't really get to sit around and watch the game. So it's like, it's like oh, uh, get right one on one v three. You never saw it. You have no <laughs> idea what you know, yeah. they were map is on. Yeah, you but was, it's in the article. Yeah, you, 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 you were stood behind one of the screens that had gone black, yeah. and you, you you knew a three man was made, but all you saw was people punching the air. Like, <laughs> you said it was amazing fuck it I'll watch a video when it comes out you know now it, it's tough fitting all the information in but you know at the same time you've got to have all the key points in there so yeah. sometimes it's what I guess you would call blind reporting so T tips of the trade should probably delete that mm. well, uh, for the favourites I think all of the favourites are top of the group 3-0 so far well, in most of the groups it's the second place that will be the big battle and it's I don't think it's any group that's uh, one group it's uh, settled almost, but in seven the groups it's we had tough fights tomorrow in the last two matches. So looking forward to that. Well, I didn't I, I didn't watch all the map all the maps, but from what I saw, <laughs> it worked it worked quite close in the uh, in the second map, but orally showed uh, he's the better player and uh, won both first ends. Right, do, do you want to know why I think it was close? And bearing in mind, like when I watch StarCraft, it is like just I don't know. It's just a fucking technical of vomit on a screen. Like, I'm gonna fucking clue what's going on, right? Like, but well, you know, this is why I thought it was close because those French shoutcasters just kept going, oh, <laughs> for like, like yeah, every time. Like, does, does that mean something good was happening? I, I really don't know, but they did it a lot. Yeah, it meant it was a battle. Something, ju just something happened, and they would scream, "Oh!" They really didn't. It didn't sound like they knew what they were talking about. Yeah, why? Why didn't they use words? <laughs> because they didn't know what words to use. I guess. <laughs> like, what? I hope that doesn't happen in CS because that's every ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Edge off. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> the edge off. <laughs> the edge off. I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, fucking no. It, it, it sounded exciting, but I, I mean, you know, because I don't speak French, as we've already established, when, when asking directions. Uh, Le beach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I <like that. laughs> right. uh, You know, does, does that mean, like, I mean, you know, is there any good information there? Like, you know, are they, are they actually good casters? Like, but just. In French, or is is the casting here pretty bad? Well, since I can't understand what they say, I can't be hundred percent sure. But it sounds horrible. They they it doesn't look like they moved the camera at all. Mm. It was poor. I um, I feel bad for the people watching the main stage. What what about um? Uh, why, why wasn't there any real like casters here? Like people that know perhaps are as well as who <laughs> you know like <laughs> bit variants like well, why aren't they here as far as I understood they haven't really been talking that much to different casters they did that in the last few days and people have casted off site like Total Biscuit from his home Calder just arrived in South Korea and casted with Doha and there was uh, a German caster I'm not sure uh, who that, is that's another thing the event was really poorly advertised not in the online sense but in like, the physical sense like Normally, like multiplayer, have signs at least. I mean, it's a bad like comparison, but multiplayer have signs like 
say, a mile before the venue, you sort of know where you're going. Here, you sort of, you're just there. And then it's, oh, it's a, it's like a four building complex. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Five football pitches big. It's like, what is going, oh, it's, oh, here it is. The casters, uh, you know, is it going to pick up as the tournament goes on? Like, are we going to get some English speakers involved? Because I think, I think the biggest thing that they've not took from last year, and again, tournament wise, they've improved in almost every area, uh, from last year, is they still haven't gone for English casters. Which to me seems insane if you want, not because, you know, I'm, I'm not being like nationalistic about it or whatever, but it just is. The global language. Yeah, there is no getting away from that fact. Yeah. Whatever you think about the English, there's no getting away from the fact the English language is yeah. universal. I'm not negative today using French casters on the main stage. It's a French event. It's They should have external ones. Yeah, that, this, this, could, online. This, this could have someone on the side English who could talk to the players. Who just has an on, on site stream who could cast the matches online. Now we have one guy in South Korea and one guy in England. I, it's I, not the same. I really hope that they have, I don't, even, I don't think they will be, but they have Toby One, Toby One Kenobi, is that his name? One of those Dover? Yeah, he's doing it from home. Is he doing it from home? Yeah. Oh, I'm happy about that then. Cause I, cause like, if he weren't here and it was in French, imagine casting Dota in French. It's mad. The game's mental. It's understandable, but there's so much going on at all times. There's no way it can be done in French. If it's the same guys, yeah, I was going to say. It's going to be one long continuous ooh. And they're GGs, like, yeah, that's it. (laughs) Other tournament related shit, right? Well, here's the thing as well. How exciting would you say? This sort of presentation in term, in star, purely in StarCraft 2 terms has been because I cannot get bitten by the StarCraft 2 bug and I thought it might change if I went to an event. And I know it's a ridiculous thing to say, like if you work in esports, the worst thing you can say is I don't really give a shit about StarCraft 2 or StarCraft. But I'd much rather be that guy than these other guys who are like faking it and trying like, to make it look like they I, care when they've never given a shit. I, like, I reckon you're more like me where you like team games. Like you like just yeah, like, well, no, 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 because I appreciate jewelers, man, because I look like Quake, you know, like, oh, fair enough. you know, I, if anything, individual dueling titles are better, right, because it's just you, there's no weak links, there's no one else to blame, either you're good or you're not, like, so from an individual right. perspective, I, I, I dig that a lot more, you know, it's like tennis or whatever, what the fuck, or boxing, you know, but, um, yeah, I don't think I'm like that, I just, I really can't get into the game, I just can't, and I just, I never understood its popularity. But I always think I'm going to go to a live event, I'm going to get it, it's going to click. But I just think there's so many people out there that kind of feel maybe a bit like I do, but they read up on it and they fake it because they just see dollar signs, you know, there's just just dollar signs everywhere. And I know a few, like, prominent people have been accused of it, like Total Biscuit, people have accused him of being just a money follower. So, I don't know, what's it What's it going to take? First, uh, let, let's, let's imagine I'm not me, and I'm just a normal Joe, and I say to you, Jonas, I can't get into StarCraft 2, and I'm here at ESWC. What's going to get me bit by the fucking SC2 bug? Well, ESWC ain't going to help you. If the devil isn't with those casters. <laughs> no, no, definitely. Is he in pain? <laughs> <laughs> no, but they have one one match, and then two and a half hour break with something yeah. else, then one match you ain't going to be bitten by if you have to just sit here and wait, watching... 1.6 female. That ain't, that ain't fun. The next topic. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what's coming up, boy. <laughs> no, I mean, but yeah, so I think if you really want to get bitten by by everything like that, you have to go to an MLG or something. That's because they're so huge, so many people, and just think all the the crowd will just make you enthusiastic. It's my bet. Okay, right. So we'll move on. That, that, that's, that's sort of the day's action and some general topics of discussion, and then we'll wrap up with Counter Strike Female. My perspective on it, and always has been, is what I don't like. People, people have said I'm sexist, which I, you know is pretty stupid in my opinion. Because what I'm saying is, I'm against it because first of all. There's no kind of physical handicaps in being female in an esports title. You know, you can move a mouse. Right? <laughs> it's, you know, there's not this massive evolutionary difference. You know, that that's going to make uh, a fucking di- you know a difference in how you play a computer game. It simply isn't. And you know, 
what bothers me most of all is the cynical way that they're just put in hot pants, tight t-shirts, uh, they're picked on looks, not talent. I mean, there is exceptions to that, but in general, you know, you see the pink fucking Zinich and all of those guys, like your god gals, who, you know, look fucking yeah. just all do- dollied up and here's a photo shoot. When, when did you last win a game? I haven't won for months. Fuck it though. We're still getting sent to all these events. And then you look at what guys have to do to get sponsorship and the standards they have to maintain. They can't just put on a fucking pair of fucking cut off denims, get their abs out and sell products. They just can't do it. And that's what I, I don't like, is that commodification of the gender. The fact that it's got a bigger prize pot than Source, I think, is offensive. They should have took that prize pot, distributed it evenly between the rest of the tournaments, and said to the women, look, you know what? Fucking bullshit. If you're good, play. If you're good, play in the men's. Right? I mean, and that's my take on it. And, I'm, I'm you know, I've always supported females in gaming, but that is not the same as supporting female gaming. I, you know, there is a clear distinction for me. Yeah. No, I understand. Also, another thing, they, they, uh, we had like a press conference thing after every big game. Shit, how can I forget about this? Right, um, and I was editing, not facing the press conference, just like on my desk editing stuff on the computer. And I got request, everybody, everybody was facing opposite to where the press conference was, was forced to turn around and view the women, because they didn't want anyone facing the opposite way. For whatever reason. Like, well, I think, I think it's because it was like, you know, they didn't want them to think that nobody cared. Yeah. When the reality is, right, if it was a choice between that and doing more work, by like listening to some females babble on, like, about their fucking, you know, super important game, I don't think should be here in the first place. I'd rather get on with my job. Yeah. You know, like, that's the truth of it. But, you know, to give them this extra special treatment, why should I respect them any more than any other fucking gamer that comes in? Again, is it white knights, bro? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Like, I don't know what you think of it. I don't have that many views upon it, except that... Ew, middle of the road. What, what, what about, what about, go wild, Jonas. What about Slayers that picked up that female gamer? Yeah, yeah, here we go, yeah. Right, now we're getting down to it. Because they even come out and said, she, yeah, she was picked on her talent and her looks. They were honest about it. Yeah, but dude, still, that's worse, isn't it? At least pretend. Pre- pretending is lying, you know? They, they're honest about it. It gives them PR. She knows it. Everybody knows it. She, it's not like she actually does anything. So Slayers are sellouts? They are part of the... They are clown slayouts. Slayers are sellouts. Yes. Slayouts? <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are cooperating with evil geniuses now, so yes. Without a doubt. They're sellouts. There we have it. Yeah, but I mean, it still doesn't really get to the whole thing about, you know... Right, if it was in any other industry, I'm pretty sure we'd call it exploitation still. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, can, can we advertise products? I mean, don't be wrong, like, nothing sells products like a pair of fucking tits or, you know, like, you know, you, you still see it in marketing, like, let's dress them up and put them in a, you know, a fucking bathtub and here's a flake, suck on that, you know, you still see it, but people are more savvy to it and repulsed by it because it's so base. I just think people are getting more and more kind of turned off to it, but in gaming, it's like, roll back the fucking years to the 80s, you know, get the shoulder pads out. You know, be a, be a nice girl, here you are, go advertise our products, pat on the ass, stick the kettle on afterwards, you know, it's nonsense, like, I just, I don't get it. I just, we should just be competing with the guys, like, you know, look, numbers are dwindling in Counter-Strike, uh, anyway, and people are getting bored of the game, you know, we talk about unifying 1.6 and CSS, well, why, here's a way to get numbers, let's just welcome women into male leagues, make them feel you know, more welcome, like, guys should share the knowledge with them, get the, the skills, you know, sealing up a bit for them, because if they stay playing amongst themselves, all that's going to happen is the one female team that are just better than all the others will just dominate, and there's no one to learn from, and, you know, there's no way to change it, so it just becomes this really insular thing, like, very games, you know, like, it's going to dominate for years. I mean, you need new people coming into the game, like, bringing new ideas and new ways of playing. And, you know, who knows, maybe in a few years you could have a team full of broads going to LAN and just, you know, fucking smashing some dudes, man. Reason female, when they went to I- an I-series in CSS, they beat some guys. Like, not in a tournament, I mean, outside in the car park. But, you know, <laughs> fucking... Till Zenith grabbed one of them. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> Zip file on request, boys. <laughs> Right, right, well, uh, fuck it, I think we've rambled enough, this is just day one after all, I don't want to keep going on about it, but that's pretty much been our thoughts and feelings on the first day, um, no doubt we're going to have a drink now, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow to, uh, yeah, because we're...
Jan- Janice. Sh- we're not drinking now. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, we'll get back and we'll do uh, another day and hopefully we'll sound less depressed. Bye. Bye-bye. Just to give everyone an idea of the working conditions there, it wasn't just a matter of not having amenities or the facilities required to do our job. We also had a battle with some pretty severe background noise as well, as this recording will demonstrate. Okay, just want to give you an idea of the um, background noise in the press area. So if you just wait a moment, I'm just round a corner uh, while I try and record this bit. Just wanted to um, expose, like, this is the kind of peace and quiet that you get at a LAN uh, event of this stature. And you can probably hear it getting a little bit louder. Right, I'm now at the press area entrance. Uh, now, okay, just listen to this. side they have actually got the speakers facing away from us but yeah I, again just for the uh, sake of the podcast people just check this out it, it's been incredible I know we probably spend the first bit moaning about the noise as well but just uh, it, it, it's a factor it's a factor in fact they actually interrupted one of their own press conferences with this huge dance music when these cheerleaders came on stage so it's uh, all of it shambolic Okay, it's day two. We're um, back in the hotel after what's been a pretty long and exhausting day. We've not long been back. It's about like just after nine o'clock. Uh, okay, let's talk about the action. So, uh, first things first, we'll, we'll get to StarCraft 2 uh, on the go because um, Jonas has just had his first Desperado. So. <laughs> <laughs> it could all be over very shortly. Uh, what did you make of the tournament today? There was like loads of upsets, wasn't there? Yeah, there several upsets. Yeah, the first one was when uh, Idra lost to some Russian player named uh, Livezerg in the round of 16. Didn't see that one coming. <clears throat> and then the next one for me was when Cloud actually beat Torsten. Cloud broke his wrist like two months ago. So that even here and competing at this high level is impressive. And then you had uh, the last one was uh, when MC actually lost to Mana 2-0, quite in the round of eight or something. Well, we'll, we'll kind of go through them first of all uh, in order. So uh, yeah, we, we got Idra uh, or Idra. Uh, I, I always call him Idra. Is that wrong? I have no idea. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, right, basically, um, I, I mean, I was surprised. I, I thought it was one of the favourites. What What did he do? Like, how did he How did he fuck it up? Well, CBC in general is quite a fragile matchup. Yeah. If you make too many drones, you can easily be busted by a couple of banelings and lose the game in a few milliseconds. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> and <coughs> and the fact that the Hydra has attended like four LANs in three different continents in one month, so he's tired, and it was obvious that he didn't, that he wasn't able to do as he should. And what about, um, I mean, fair enough to, I, I always thought Cloud was a competent player anyway, I mean. He is. He, that, that's yeah. live so as well as a competent player. Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, player. certainly. But I mean, I wouldn't, it's not as big a shock as the others, right? I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things. No, it's not, it's not. Okay. It's like Cloud Torsen was, it's mad Torsen should have won, and I, I would bet him in any day, any week, any day of the week, but, I saw the last map and, it, and Cloud had control. You saw Torsten mm. just didn't know what to do. So, well deserved by Cloud. And obviously MC and um, Mana or Mana. Uh, what happened there was, uh, again from my understanding, was MC was just taking the game really jovially. Like he just didn't seem sort of in the first map and he was kind of just messing around um, and using units that didn't seem to fit in with his overall strategy and then it kind of bit him on the arse. I mean, that seems to, well, I mean, again, to the layman, and I'm very layman, uh, that seemed to be what was happening. Is that your take on it? Well, it was what I thought happened, mm. because I didn't watch the first map, but when I read about it, it has been not a match that people commented on, mm. because uh, both players did almost the exact same build, and but MC lost the game way more than Mana won them. 
Well, why, why is that then? Because, I mean, MC was on a hot streak and he seems supremely confident. We saw him in that press conference, uh, you know, before when, it, when he, he was laughing, joking, took the time to answer a lot of questions. I mean, he was there for 20 minutes. Um, obviously, he's thwarted a mugging as well at the same time. So, I mean, you know, why did he lose to a player that realistically, you know, he should have been? Well, PvP, almost anyone can win. And uh, the, in the first game, MC made a mistake of not having complete control of his unit, so non attacked. Not every, not the major units for MC wasn't around, so Mana just swept all the way quite easily. And in the second game, <coughs> MC he panicked when uh, Mana dropped him, and Mana did way more damage than he should be able to. And any any master player in general should be able to do that easily, but something went wrong. Okay, so uh, looking at kind of how it panned out, I mean, uh, do we think we've got some really good matchups tomorrow? I mean, the thing is, the way that it's all kind of mapped out now, I really can't see anyone but Stefano taking the title now, and the crowd really heavily biased as well. I mean, Tom's been on the receiving end of that before when you were competing, haven't you? So... Yeah, when I was videoing uh, the stage games, uh, the commentators <coughs> are very, very overly biased to the French players, which you probably would never see in any other sort of competitive environment. Memories of Land 79 for you. You've got to tell that 1v1 <laughs> story. Exactly. Uh, back when I was playing Call of Duty at Land 79, there was um, a point where one of the French players stood up and made all the crowd like stamp their feet. <laughs> I'm in a 1v1, and I already had techno behind me on the stage. <laughs> yeah, they put, you, they put your team by yeah. the speakers. Well. Yeah, and um, so I literally had no idea. He was just sprinting at me. No idea. No. <laughs> we won the game anyway. But yeah, a similar thing happened at this event. Like the, he just, the commentator just kept getting everyone to shout, Stefano, Stefano. They're not everyone in the entire arena was shouting it and I don't care. I couldn't hear it over fucking Billie Jean. <laughs> <laughs> if I hear Billie Jean one more time, I am going to fucking kill myself. But yeah, so, um, yeah, I can't, I, I mean, coming back to you, Jonas, I, I, I honestly can't see anyone but Stefano winning it now. Well, to me, <coughs> right now, the biggest favourite is Marine King, even though he's the Kong line, as mm. they potentially say it in the StarCraft community. So I that mean? That means that he always comes to the finals and he never wins. Oh, uh, right. He's lost like five different finals at the moment. Not me, then. <laughs> <laughs> no, he gets to the finals. <laughs> uh, I remember man for the eSports Festival. <laughs> you weren't in the fucking finals there, were you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Far from. Don't worry about it. I do worry about it, Tom. I worry about you over-aggrandizing your achievement <laughs> very <laughs> much. <laughs> Jason had lost to Dignitas Mick six finals in a row. <laughs> Look, let's face facts, right? Last time someone came up to you at a land and recognised who you were, they asked, oh, are you that shoutcaster? <laughs> You've achieved nothing. <laughs> yeah. Right, so yeah, so you see Crunchy King Prawn with <laughs> I see Crunchy King Prime taking uh, at least one of the spots in the finals. And for the other spot, I'm... Going with the Grubby just because he's been um, one month in Korea I, practicing. I was literally going to uh, end on him because, you know, obviously we all know Grubby and I think when StarCraft 2 first came out and everyone was talking about him switching over and bigging him up, I always thought that was really misplaced and I didn't see him doing well in, in StarCraft 2. You know, fantastic player in, in Warcraft 3 and, you know, achieved so much and you know, huge name in esports in general and a, and a great guy, you know, but uh, I, I didn't see him making a big impact in StarCraft 2, but he's looking a lot better now. It seems to be that, you know, if you really do want to play StarCraft 2 to the best of your ability, you've got to spend some time in Korea. That just seems to be the, the kind of quick ticket. Well, yeah, it's a quick ticket, without a doubt, but when you see Stefano now, he's won events and he hasn't been to Korea and he has no plan to go to Korea, so... It's. I reckon if he'd got in a complexity, that they would have had some plans to send him out. Probably, but he's. If I understand correctly, he's just playing to do this one year mm. and then stop. So. Well, I think when the money comes rolling in, he'll he'll probably reassess that one. Probably. Okay, so that's the Starcraft two out of the way. Uh, on day well, <laughs> day two for us and day two of the podcast, day three of the event overall. Uh, one point six as well. 
Tom, you love 1.6. You always wish you'd played 1.6. I do wish I played 1.6. Instead of card. <laughs> so, <laughs> so much. What, <laughs> what, what's your take on, you know, how, uh, how, how to lose Um, it's been pretty, uh, how it should have gone, <coughs> if you, if you're talking about who the f- people think that the top two will go in each group. Um, unfortunately we got shoved out of the event in the last minute, so I'm not yeah. sure who's to We're actually trying to catch up yeah. with, with the with the scores. We're not actually sure time. who won Fnatic's group or anything. But uh in um SK's group, um the the big toss up was between Moscow Five and DTS. Um the two Eastern European well, Russian and Eastern European teams. Uh Moscow Five came on top. Uh, they almost beat SK as well. 13 rounds to 16 rounds. It was on Forge, though. It was, yeah, it's true. Quite a random map. Um, but either way, uh, the, the top two that everyone hoped for that group to go through did go for SK and uh, Moscow 5. And the other group, um, th- uh, with again, or should I say Frag Executors. No, you should say again. Well, again, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> the Poles. Um, it was, uh, the toss up was really between Lions and ESC, the, the ten Swedish boys battling it out. Uh, I was actually watching behind Lions. Nine Swedes and one Norwegian fellow. Well, actually, he's right, isn't he? Yeah, you've been done by the SC2 editor. I know. Upsetting. Tell me to edit that out. <laughs> 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 it's not too late. <laughs> no. Okay. Either way, um, yeah, Lions played really well. Uh, Fret had an amazing game. He was like, he was, at least 10 or 15 frags above the rest of his team. Um, so props to him, and as well as Neil doing a lot of great work. Uh, yeah, so Lions won that game <coughs> pretty comfortably against ESC. So Lions and uh, the Poles, who had what seems to be no trouble whatsoever against anyone. Um, <coughs> we're actually looking at the scores now because we didn't even get to see the end of WinFact's group. Yeah, well, I don't even know. I don't know if these are up to date or if like if it's even the groups finished. have finished. Yeah, <laughs> we don't know. literally. Uh, d- to clarify in this, just in the middle of the one point six roundup, <clears throat> what's happening now is we're getting removed from the venue before the tournament even finishes. So, uh, so before the, you know the day's action even finishes. So literally, there's games still playing while the journalists are being removed. forcibly <laughs> removed. From the venue, you know that the security are telling you you have to get out, uh, and you have to get out, and that's it. But the players are still playing, so we're not even getting accurate, up to date reportage from the fucking venue because you're not allowed to. So we don't have the group. You know, as it stands, we're trying to find from other sites that are in the same position as us, <laughs> having been kicked out. No one knows. What's going on? And yeah, probably no one knows, and we're not going to know until the morning, you know, or until someone can bell one of the players. So we were in a bit of a ridiculous situation. The one thing we did see in Group C was the big upset, which was the the Portuguese defining stars beating a Nexus. And I know there's loads of Portuguese who are going to go, that's not an upset. But boys, it's an upset. Yeah, I mean, the Nexus were, they they beat Fnatic in the groups at IEM. Um, They're a good team. They're, they're, They're a team that can contend against anyone. Um, but yeah, the finding stars are something like 14-7 down, and I was sitting there with my camera, like, hearing, hearing them cheering and stuff, and round by round they brought it back 16-14 on Inferno, so that's a massive result. Uh, there will be something up on Cadre, well... By the time you, Bob, you'll listen to this. Yeah. yeah we're gonna do this at the end of the event. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I fucking, well, I fucking hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I get a bad it depends. <laughs> depends on the press area, doesn't it? Exactly. Might take us that long to get a fucking internet cable. That's true. Um, but yeah, big upset. Um, the Danes lost out. I, I was looking at them afterwards. They're pretty, pretty bummed out. Um, but the Portuguese are really happy, and they've got a really vocal manager, which I like. But uh, yeah, that's the, that's pretty much everything I'd seen from the CS. Apart from that, there wasn't really anything shocking happening. I mean, in Group D, uh, Mouse Sports played some of the more noobish teams, didn't they? And they yeah. won. I think and they won both games. Um, I know Fnatic played once and they won, so there's no real surprises going on there at the moment. Um, I mean, basically in that group you have got a guaranteed win. I'd say no matter who you are, because you've got that hour game you've come all the way from <laughs> reunion. <laughs> exactly. Um, I didn't even. I didn't even think it was a real country. <laughs> I literally thought it was. Yeah, I thought it was a mistake, a joke, a typo. Because I had a French flag as well. 
It's like the, it's a French colony in the arse end of the world, and it's tiny. It's got a population of about how did they qualify? Six people. Where was there a qualify? Did they come to France to qualify? I, I don't even know what the story is because they can't communicate it. <laughs> it's just it's, <laughs> it's BBC it, need to do a documentary. It's sitting <laughs> up in seriously, right? Like when I when I saw the f uh, pictures of the island, it's this idyllic utopia. Like it's just you know proper beautiful beaches. Little wooden houses, everything's nice, ferns everywhere, a volcano in the background, <laughs> do you know what I mean? The land that time forgot, <laughs> and they've got a 1.16. <laughs> like, what is going what on? What is going on, exactly. So, I I'd love them to do well, I'd love all the underdogs to do well. I I you know, I want Viva Algeria to... Uh, yeah, one win at least. Yeah, you know, it should be sweet. It's just, uh, you know, obviously with the politics of Algeria and France as well, I think it's just great to see a team called Viva Algeria playing in a big French tournament. Um, you know, so I'll be cheering them on. Um, they had some problems actually, another story that kind of came out was, uh, the HLTVs weren't working in Africa for some reason. There was, they couldn't connect to them. And there was people from Algeria, like, actually yeah. going mad, we want to follow Viva Algeria. And we can't watch it, do something about it. I don't even know what the problem was, but I'm hoping it's been resolved. Well, They're not going to get a lot of chances, really, to, to cheer on a team in a tournament this big. Other than that, I was actually speaking to the manager of Israel, just asking him. In Hebrew? Yeah. I was just asking. You oh, fucking where, flash bastard. Where are you As if from? you dropped that. I've been wandering around this event. Mercy, boo, goo. <laughs> like, like, like fucking Del Boy, right? Like, you know what I mean? And there's you speaking in fucking Hebrew to the manager of Israel. I hope you die. It's good though. But I didn't, I didn't get much because he spoke well fast. But yeah. That was good. A fellow brother. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your, uh, what are your thoughts about, uh, you know, how, it, how it's setting up? Obviously, again, in lines through SK and Moscow Fiber through. For me, I'd say we've probably seen the two win, like, the two potential winners in action, like, again, in SK. Yeah. And, you know, which one out of those two's look the better for you, um, based on the day? I, well, I want to say, SK always look good, but again, just win, somehow. Mm -hmm. They are, they are the ultimate team. They, I reckon when the, like, when shit hits the fan, they just win somehow, and they always do. I remember watching an interview with Khan, and he was like, "There are like Forrest is like one of the best players. Get right, it's one of the best players. But like, no matter what shit situation a gainer in, or like Frankie is, whatever they thought, Neo will just do something. Something will happen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I, he will win. Like regardless, if his teammates are just playing awfully, which they never, they rarely do now." For, for me, like the game that I watched them play, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was against the Lions. Um, I think, yeah, it was a lot. No, it was the Moscow 5 game I watched where Forrest had to go absolutely insane, which is just, you know, yeah. he keeps doing it. He's probably the best ever, isn't he? Yeah. And, you know, and, and they're, they're, a, they're an awesome side, right? Like, no doubt about it. But they did seem to have this fragility to them. It's it's really hard to judge because bizarrely a game played all of their games on Nuke. Really? Yeah, the way the map veto worked out, they played all of them on, on Nuke. And it's their best map. So. Yeah, it's a very good map for them. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind of, it was, you know, it, they won all the games, did it comfortably, clocked up a better round difference than SK. And I, I SK, when they started losing rounds against Moscow 5, especially D, you know, they lost three Deco rounds. Three. Like, in a half, yeah, a lot. you know, uh, they were like, that you could see it in their eyes, how is this happening, why is this happening, <laughs> uh, you know, it's on a shit map as well, D4, sure, but fuck, you know, it's yeah. just, it shouldn't should be going on, so, but, uh, on, based on the day, again, they've definitely looked the stronger. I, I just reckon it's just, they look, but I think they're, they're just older, I reckon they're just more chilled out, if anything. Pasha ain't. Like, if he's not old, but like, no, but I mean, you know what? What I mean is, if he gets pissed off, uh, he, yeah. he, he chilled is not <laughs> in his vocab. He can Break, smash his Hulk smash. He <laughs> can kill people with his bare hands while wearing oven gloves. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's unreal, <laughs> next know. level big. He is. You have to watch he's out. Massive. But yeah, I, I'm just hoping for some um, good games. I reckon by the looks of it. Even though we're not sure, it's gonna be Winfat Navi, Mouse Sports Fanatic, 
SK must go five again lines. And um <clears throat> I actually I don't Navi just a toss up. I reckon it was because they had such a long run as the best that they There are a lot of factors. They've lost their Arbolet funding, that's gonna be a factor. They they did have a long run at the top. Yeah you know, with with one point six you get dynasties. Yeah. No team dominates really for more than a year. But there are two teams that have stayed always top three, mm. which is the Poles and MTW. Mm. That's true. Well, fan Fnatic have only recently had that drop off since they assembled that yeah. great team. Yeah, but it's just a complete different roster now, isn't it? And SK, well, they've done well. And then they had like a, they, when they lost two, I don't know mm. it was. Um, and they got like a third place or something. But uh, always, for years, I'm talking like since 2005 or whenever, when all the old lot quit mm. and new people started getting better, it's just been the Poles, MTW, and then some sort of Swedish team. Mm. Or Na'Vi. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just want to watch a game uh, versus... I reckon we'll be in a game SK final with like a, a win fact on Na'Vi third. It's a prediction. I've seen Na'Vi going out earlier. I really do. I just I don't think they're the same team anymore. I, I know there's a lot of it, a lot of rumours and stuff about there's like in game or like internal problems between Edward the way he just doesn't really care anymore. Mm -hmm. He's earned a lot of money doing what he's done. Yeah. He just thinks well, it's a bit pointless now, isn't it? I don't really want to play. I think it's 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 a motivational factor. I mean, you know, you saw it with CGS. Uh, the minute you took those players' salaries away. Their left, you know, it just collapsed. You're left in a situation where it's like, well, I've had a taste of a good life. Why the yeah. fuck would I go back to scrapping for a thousand pound prizes? Yeah. Uh, so they're not going to do that. <clears throat> and it is hard to, to adapt and adjust. So, I, you know, I, I can not sympathize, that's the wrong word. I can understand it. Yeah. I know, it's true. I mean, it always, like, it's, it always happens when I can, I can imagine how hard it must have been with Source when, like, all the UK guys just thought. Fuck. Now we're back playing for the two grand first place. That we get paid in a year. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, but it, it, I guess it, I also think they don't want to remove him because there, there is no, you have to start from scratch. He is unreal. When he was motivated, he was ridiculous. So I don't know. I reckon that they've just got some problems they need to sort out. And who knows? They could just come here and put a smile back on their faces and just dominate us. I don't know, it's open. Not, but not I, Yeah, I don't see happening either, but it is a possibility. Lots of things are a possibility. Yeah. Possibility we might get fucking, you know, working internet. <laughs> Tomorrow. Uh, free coffee. Oh, could you imagine? <laughs> could you imagine these things? <laughs> these. You had to be coffee, just in the wrong press room. I'm not going back in the press room where they're drinking champagne. Like, I, I, I feel so out of place. <laughs> I can't handle it. Anyway, enough waffle. Um, so that was the day two summary. Tomorrow is going to be all the StarCraft stuff kicking off, the finals of that, and they're trying to get the Source, uh, sorry, the 1.6 final out the way before Source. So it's going to be a big day. They're also having the after party, but the after, they're having the after party on the Sunday... Before. before the event finishes, so it's not after anything really, but they're calling it the after party. There's only three tournaments that finished, it's Trackmania, Starcraft 2 and Series 1.6 female. The the way they have done it is they wanted to get all the 1.6 females in a room before they left. Yeah. The Starcraft 2 players in a room to add credibility and they're letting the Trackmania guys tag along. Because their game's inoffensive. Yeah. <laughs> <And> that's <laughs> about it. It's pretty huge in France. It's, it's not large. Inoffensive. Yeah. The, the audience <laughs> is huge for Trackmania in France. It can't be. It is. I'm Look serious. at it. I'm serious. Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels. It can't so, be. Baby. You saw how, how many people <laughs> raced up cheering like madmen when the French guy won Trackmania. They cheer if a French man won a fucking crossword prize. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? They don't give a fuck about anything except French so supremacy. Is, like the biggest nation for Crackmania is France. And on that bombshell, <laughs> we move on. Day three, still surviving. <laughs> Peace.
We already understood that a large part of the podcast was going to be complaining about the working conditions and environment that we were in at ESWC and kind of the battles we had to go through to get the coverage out to you guys at cadred.org. And we uh, didn't want you to just take our word for it. We spoke to uh, Nitro and Swordfish, who are the general manager and assistant general manager from the organization Immunity. They traveled all the way from Australia to come to ESWC to do coverage for their website. And I'm sure you already know the Immunity name. For example, their 1.6 team won the Australian World Cyber Games qualifier. And certainly they've been associated with the top end of esports in Australia for a long, long time indeed. They were incredibly disappointed with what they found when they got to France and the conditions that they were working in after coming such a long way and they found they were getting little cooperation from the ESWC staff so don't just take our word for it we uh, we interviewed them briefly in the press area which you can now listen to Okay, well, continuing uh, the theme of, of bad experiences at ESWC, I'm here with Swordfish, who's the general manager of Immunity, the uh, Australian organisation. Uh, 1.16 did just win uh, the WCG qualifiers, so they're going to be at WCG. Uh, and also, they've had a FIFA player here. Uh, now, he's had a pretty rotten time, so you don't want to take my word for it. Take it from someone who's come all the way from Australia to, uh, to cover this event. So... What's been going on for you? I mean, how, how have your experience been? Um, yeah, well, we've had, I mean, from day one, it, it was. It started all right. Um, and then from there, it started to get a bit shaky. Um, we've had a really tough time even trying to enter the play arena. They won't actually allow us in. Um, my assistant manager actually got pulled out by security um, because he didn't have a uh, blue band, which we didn't know that you had to actually have this. Um, with... Um, like Richard, um, water has been taken away from us in the press room. The the internet has been terrible. We haven't, we weren't told to bring uh, Ethernet cables. Uh, we just assumed you would be provided them. We thought like maybe we could actually borrow one from them. We've actually seen them being given away to other people. They won't allow us to have any. So we've been French French media that is. That's right. That's right. So we've been sitting here with a Wi-Fi connection trying to upload 500 meg videos which has taken about four hours at least um, and sometimes even failing so it's it's been to an extent it's been a nightmare for us just trying to get content out for the Australian public and it's been yeah really frustrating it's I mean it's a shame because I mean my sister manager this is his first um, international event and to be treated like this um, is, is pretty sub oh, yeah he looks pretty dejected I'll just get him to say something uh, some of your feelings on the matter and sorry, first of all, what's your, what's your gamer handle? What would people know you as? Nitro. All right, Nitro. It's very great fucking manly names you Australians have. Swordfish <laughs> and fucking Nitro. I'm fucking Gonzo. I'm named after a Muppet, right? So, okay, so uh, so Nitro, you gladiator-sounding motherfucker. What, what uh, you know, what, 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 your first first major event and, and this happens, how are you feeling? Um, first impressions looked amazing. Everything on the outside just really beautiful. But um, as, it, as time progressed, it just... The feeling wore off, you know, wore off. Um, I found that things just weren't happening the way that we should be, especially from past experiences that I've heard from, like, my the general manager, Swordfish, um, and it's just ultimately disappointing. You're not even given water, basic human right. <laughs> Come on. Well, so, uh, well, to sum it up as well, I mean, in terms of... Uh you know, I mean, I know you've come all this way, and and I know that the Australian public does enjoy esports very much. You know, and you've been to a lot of events. I mean, can, can you are, are you surprised that this is so far behind, say, something like a WCG? And just for the people that maybe aren't in the press and haven't had that experience, I mean, can you do a contrast between the WCG and the SWC and your experiences in both? Definitely. Them? I mean, I went to a WCG last year in LA, and I got to say, I was blown away by that. So the press room. Uh, uh, everyone was provided an Ethernet cable. Uh, the upload speeds were almost, I think, three megs a second. Here, I mean, would be lucky to get, even get probably a three meg, meg an hour. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, um, and there was there was actually a fridge full of coke and water and there's food. Um, and it's, it was just so much easier to get around. Uh, even I mean, you, you might think that the language barrier was hard, but I mean, the the people at the door at the press room uh, here speak English and they still won't allow us but are very biased towards the, the French media and it's 
it is really frustrating, especially we've come 22 hours um, to experience this, and it, yeah, it's, it is annoying, and, but I mean, what can we do? Well, the final thing is, it's the after party tonight. It's the after party before the event finishes. That's right, yeah, uh, we're uh, still shaky on that. <laughs> <laughs> right, but um, I, I'm guessing you guys are going to go out and get uh, hammered uh, tonight, is that the plan? Yeah, well, I think it's going to be Australia versus England in a few drinking tournaments. <laughs> Mate, I'm bad. If I, I can't go. If I, if I, if I drink at this after party, bad things will happen. I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm as pissed off as you guys. So. Yeah, well, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But yeah, hopefully hopefully that's that's good. I mean, we've seen the videos and hopefully that lives up to expectation. But well, I heard those cheerleaders are going to be there. So Right, well, maybe it will then. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll interview you tomorrow and I'll be like, yeah, it's a fucking great event. It was amazing. I mean, could, couldn't upload for shit, but those cheerleaders, yeah, eh? They, like, they love the Australian accent, so <laughs> we might already be ahead. Someone, someone has to. Yeah. But anyway, honestly, thanks a lot for joining us. It's been fun sharing a press area with you yeah. and uh, everything. So, uh, and sorry you're having a bad time. I, I can say if you come at some uh, other Euro European events and I see you there, I'm sure uh, they won't be as bad. So. Yeah, well, most definitely. Hopefully we'll, we'll see you around. So. All right, Thank thanks you. a lot, buddy. After that, we decided to ready ourselves for the after party. You can probably already hear in our voices now by day three that the event is taking its toll on us. Uh, and we had actually decided that we weren't going to go to the after party. But after three days of near torture and everything else, we made the foolish, as it would turn out, decision to attend. Here we are in blissful ignorance before leaving our hotel room. Okay, it's day three, <laughs> the third full day of um, ESWC. It just reminds me of the film 127 Hours, where he sat at that rock. <laughs> it's, it's been it's been a tough day today. Uh, you'll probably the way I'm going to edit it. You, you'll probably have already heard from the Australian about how the press room is, is, is sort of being handled at the moment and today they took away our water the, the day started with them taking away our water we had water but they took it away <laughs> <laughs> and they said we couldn't have any more water that only the staff could have water so We've been stealing water. We've been reduced to kind of finding water because I don't want to pay 60 euros for a bottle of heavy on. And you have to stay in life for like an hour. Yeah, and you got to queue for an hour. And with the press, we've got, we got shit to do. For them. <laughs> <laughs> Why if they took our water? Anyway, it's been an action-packed and exciting day of, of uh, just monumental proportions. I think we'll start with the StarCraft 2. Jonas? <sighs> well, the StarCraft 2... <laughs> <laughs> uh, the StarCraft 2 started with the semi-finals today. And uh, we had two good matches, so to say. Both matches was 1-2-0. First it was um, Stefano, who beat uh, Marine King Prime 2-0. And it wasn't close at all. Disappointed in Marine King. I thought Crunchy King Prom was going to go all the way for sure. I was, I, I, I'm, dis I, no one's more disappointed than me. Not even him. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was hoping for uh, Marine King to win. Oh, crunchy Prawn. <laughs> Did I fucking call him? <laughs> but I wasn't surprised that Stefano beat him because with Marine King's Marine heavy style, that just like count. Stefano's style counts in like 10 times. Does that mean just because he's got that name, he can no ever longer change his playstyle? Of course he can, but that's the playstyle he's good at. He ain't good with tanks. But surely now everyone knows what he's gonna do. Yeah, but he's so good with the Marines that people. It's like saying if I change my name to B Rush, <laughs> they, sort of, they sort of know what I'm gonna do, don't they? <laughs> What, what, do you, what do you do to stop a B rush? But the difference. B. But the difference. They now know. The difference between, like, B rush and sauce, <laughs> or can't strike in general, and using Marines heavily in your composition in StarCraft 2 is that you have, like, B rush, that you rush fucking B. 
marines. You can like do you make pat- lots of them. Yeah, you make lots of them. But you can <laughs> make. But you can make ta- You can make tanks. You can make tanks. You can make. He doesn't have to make only marines. Yeah, Tom. <laughs> like your B rush idiot. <laughs> Tom B. Rush Newman. That's <laughs> <laughs> what's he going to do? I don't know. Right. Anyway. Um, yeah. And uh, the other summer final were between uh, <coughs> Grubby and Mana. Quite surprising semi final. Would have thought that would be Hydro versus MC. And uh, normally I would have given the edge to Grubby since he'd been in. Korea for over a month practicing, but uh, w- with Mana beating mm. like for Sake, the guy that's known for having insane PvP, and then MC gave him the edge and he destroyed Grubby more or less. Even said he wasn't the toughest match in the interview. So, to be fair, though, I thought Mana was looking in real good, you know, good form this event. He... Yeah, he, he often is at the international events. Mm. He has, like, he's this is his third final at the major. Major Starcraft 2 event offline. So he's a great player and a huge star, like 17 years old. So, and then he I'm looks just, older. Yeah, he does. He, he he's m- Polish. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, these Europeans look older. Simple as that. <laughs> they do! I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> they do! Most of them. I'm like, how am I ending now? <laughs> How am I ending that out? He's bowling. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> of course I can. Okay, you can. You like, it, if people want to be mad at me for coming like that, then fuck them. Like, seriously. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the kid, it, it's happening. He's, he's got the quickening. How much of that vodka has he drunk? It's only a tiny bit, and he's changed. Right. And, uh, well, then we had the bronze final between uh, Grubby and uh, Marine King, or... Crunchy King. Crunchy Prawn. King. <laughs> Crunchy King Prawn. You are going to get it right <laughs> by, by the end. <laughs> by, by, the end. end. <laughs> by the end of the week. Uh, which I didn't see. I saw some of it, and uh, from what I understood, Marine King had good control of the matches, and he won 3-1. And at the end, we had the finals between Mana and Stefano. And, uh, you know, like, Mana never wins any finals anyways. And Stefano is a beast. He, you gotta be good to crush players like Marine King. You know what I was saying, right? When we were watching the final, and I said, it's a French final with a French crowd, with French shoutcasters, and they weren't wearing any noise cancelling headsets, yeah, they were. were they? They were. Are you sure? Yeah, they sure. But but they did. But they do hear what they said because then Mana told me. I asked him. Yeah. And he said he would talk to admins, but the sound sounded even louder at the finals. But but when you watched Stefano's, play, I'm not saying that's why he no, won because no, obviously he's in such good form <laughs> right now. He, he, he must be in amongst folks. I called him to win it at the yeah, start. He would you know? probably win it anyways, like because it's he's a beast. But uh, but when you saw his play, he made like. He didn't react to anything that Mana did before he saw it. Mm. Uh, he made spore crawlers without any reason at all. Which is, isn't that unnormal at all, but... So, he probably did hurt some things, and he were... Every time he played at the stage, he or he were like... Which was three times! Yeah, three times. They even changed who were playing at the stage, because they wanted to show Marine King Prime versus Stefano. But I would also show Marine King Prime and Stefano instead of Grubby and Mana. That's like... Yeah, I, I, even I, I agree Polish, with that. Uh, even a Polish event would do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. You have two of the best players in the world. You'd rather have them on stage yeah. than two... No, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm totally, totally with you on that. But, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, as an outsider, and you don't get much more outsider than a Norwegian, um, <laughs> you know, do you think there was any bias? Any unfair oh, treatment? Oh, definitely. Like... Entire tournament, like even the players, say like the French, the French guys, like even the press area. Even you were French, you got like this. Even if you weren't a media partner, you got the media partner. Yeah, whatever it's called in English. Uh, so wristband. Uh, yeah, wristband. I'm guessing that like the players got this as well. Like the Stefano did what he did. He had the admin sitting right beside him all the time almost. And he upset you because he didn't want to do an interview yeah, with you and you asked him how many times? I asked him three times total. First time, 
I can't remember what, but he had just finished the match and he was like, the next one is starting in one hour and he didn't want to do an interview. He did an interview like five minutes after that. <laughs> uh, the second time, he was like, it was five hours until the finals and he wanted to prepare. He didn't start playing any matches until two hours later. The third time, he was, he's, he was like, you could see that he was sick, but he did, he did like two interviews after this and no to me, so he definitely didn't like me. Perhaps he'd seen some of your videos where you're going, it's Jonas! <laughs> At the introduction of every, every interview. You might have been scared. Yeah. Uh, He's a young fella. And, and a small one. Yeah, I was going to say, you're quite a big guy, so. Right, well, you know, uh, final thoughts on StarCraft 2, because we won't mention it again during the podcast. So, uh, uh, did you enjoy the tournament, uh, talking as a spectator? You know, what are your thoughts about it? Well, I didn't get to be a spectator that much, but... It was an okay tournament, mm. like they had poor schedule, so it's impossible to find out who were playing who if you weren't asking the admins. So for the guys at home, it must be horrible following. Uh, no on-site English casters. Even the French cast cost like a total of six matches or something. And you said they weren't very good. Uh, Even though you don't understand French. They sounded better in the finals. But uh, in some of the groups, they yeah, because they, they, they were giving up more information yeah, yeah. for Stefano. That's why, you like, know. Like, yeah, <laughs> probably, probably. And but like, I understand that you you are biased when you when you cast some of your own one for your own country and stuff. But there are limits to how biased you can be. And when the camera movement they had, they were like. Here's, here's Stefano, here's Stefano, I would just show, show you mana space for like a half a second and back to Stefano, yeah. even though Stefano did nothing and I missed every drop. They, it was for the guys, that, I feel bad for the people at the main stage because it was one of the worst so, of service I've ever seen. So uh, a long way to go before it measures up to the tournaments we see, you know, coming out of like GSL, you know, all, all of that stuff. Well, no foreign tournament will have a good of serving yeah, but I mean, it, you know, I mean, it, you know, in terms of you know, just well, coverage you, and what it provides and stuff. You can say like to MLG and IPL, they're far, far away. I, I can't see them compete with them, uh, never. But everyone says they love it in the SWC press conferences. Yeah, it's weird, that isn't it? <laughs> well, it's weird that when you get the players alone, they've got different views as well. I mean, and when they're doing an official ESWC I'm, I'm press conference, <laughs> oh yeah, the ESWC, the best event in Europe I've ever been to. Wait, you weren't just saying that a minute ago, mate. But, but I'm, I'm guessing also that's because uh, that's because uh, oh, well. no, I'm guessing that's why they didn't put Hydra up there because <laughs> yeah, no. they didn't. Actually, you're right. They didn't put Hydra there. They didn't put Hydra <laughs> there, did they? I didn't. I didn't fucking think of that. They didn't put him anywhere near a microphone, did they? No, but he didn't. Act, but he didn't have any like big match to show either because his group were relatively yeah, easy. They had Cloud, not Cloud. Who were the first people that went up on a press conference? That was his mole man. Yeah. That was a French guy. So it, yeah, it was. What was it? Oh. Axe wound and mole man. <laughs> Axe lad and mole man. <laughs> I, to, I, I never understood like half the match they had on stage. They were because you had so much good players and you had like the semi-good on the stage. It's stupid. And uh, yeah, okay tournament. It's, yeah, but it, it sounds like you haven't enjoyed it, Jonas. It sounds like what? you're a bit disappointed. Of course, I haven't enjoyed it. They blocked the fucking streams. Mm. I, <laughs> <laughs> so, I can sit on the main stage, not having power from my computer, watching one match every third hour or so, or I could be sitting with the stream, the English stream, watching it, and even when you enter the press area the first two days, it was a sign, watch ESWC live, but every single stream were blocked, you couldn't watch it. I've never seen you this angry, Jonas, I, I don't like it. <laughs> when I come to an event doing StarCraft 2 coverage, I want to talk to the StarCraft 2 guys, I want to watch their games, I didn't watch any single game, I was like, Three games total. But you did get to chant Stefano while Billy Jean played <laughs> in the background. <laughs> Stefano, <laughs> Stefano. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, well, let, let's just draw a line under it. I'll, I'll be honest, right, okay? I said on a day one or day two I hadn't been bitten by the bug, and that still definitely stands true. But I was starting to get into it a little bit more by the end. As the games got a little bit better, I don't know if that's just like acclimatization. Like, if I was in a gulag by by day three or four, I'd be thinking, 
it's not that bad here. <laughs> digging uranium out of the ground with your bare hands, you know, it's all right. So I don't know if you would just change you must, your opinion. You like. must have been excited when I was like almost screaming at what Mana did. Like, but like, game. I don't know what you're screaming at, Joe. That was is amazing. It? Oh. If I had been home <laughs> to watch that, oh no, you shouldn't have done Listen that. to <laughs> him. Right, so we move on to 1.6. Tom, do you remember the 1.6 <laughs> tournament? Do you remember? Yeah. That's good, uh, right, so. It was group stay, group Yeah, right. we finished off, we finished off the <laughs> second groups, so there was a slight delay. So that's how the day started, and we saw uh, a few kind of upsets that didn't turn out to really have much bearing on it, like an Exus beating Na'Vi 16-4, and. But they went out anyway. But they went out anyway. Um, Fnatic so, went out. Fnatic went, went out. I'm not that surprised though. Ben Do you know what? Ryan I'm not. I'm, can, I, can I just go on the record now and say that that team is shit? They're, shit. they're all right. Like, the experienced players in it oh, are man. done. It's not. It's not that. that. It's not that. It's the experienced players still have the experience, but they yeah, need, yeah. they need yeah, some yeah. monster players next to them. They need if they had players, they could just like when they had Get Blind Forest, they'll kill everyone. Yeah, of course for they them. They just need to be told where to go <laughs> at what time, and they'll kill everyone. But no, but they've lost their drive. Yeah, because they have. They were winning everything. Khan will go. Khan will go. DSN's done. Khan will go. Yeah, well, yeah, but exactly. And Khan's missing him. You know. So yeah, totally. I, you know. I don't know, look, for me, I think what Fnatic did, right, it was admirable to stick by the players that built the team when their stars were in talks with SK and were trying to, get, you know, all of that situation. Fucking hats off to Fnatic for sticking by the boys that built the team rather than the better players and the big star names, right? That's, you know, exactly the right attitude I'd expect from management. But the experiment has failed. <laughs> the human experiment has failed. And you need to draw a line under it. And for me, what they've tried to do is they've tried to bolt on players and replace players. And I think what Fnatic should have done is they should have just scrapped the team. They should have said, boys, when do you want to retire? Maybe soon? Yeah. What tournament can we draw a line under it? You know, bang. Out you go, and we just bring in a new team. I mean, because look, right? I mean, pick up the poles. Right, pick right up exactly. The no, no, but serious, serious, right? Is that is that is that the crazy? Is that a crazy suggestion? Is that like? It's not that. that it's not that Four that days in France talk, you know? Is that a good idea? But like before, the Polish lost their team. Were there any like decent team they could take in? Yeah, yeah true, true, true. Yeah, yeah, but you know, so but the, again, the one point six community is smaller and smaller. It's not like there comes so many new good teams. Yeah, but again, it's fanatic. It's yeah. Fnatic. Yeah, who do, who you, do doesn't want to represent Fnatic? It's not that, it's just, there's, you can't see a non-Swedish team in Fnatic, can you? Imagine Fnatic MSI Neo. It look weird. I wouldn't. I'm there, there was, it's not like it's not like the fucking Swedish. It's not like Fnatic is Swedish. But if you look at a lot of their teams, COD team Swedish, CS team Swedish. Yeah, unless it hasn't got a big Swedish contingent. Mm. Yeah. You don't have a single Starcraft 2 player that's Swedish. Just buying out. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> we would we would have missed that, me and you, Tom. We would have let that fucking slip yeah. right through the cracks. But yeah, anyway, so Fnatic went out, and yeah, I just I just think it's time now, boys. You know, fucking last call for drinks in it, and just you know, yeah. it's it's been a good night. But let's it's just, not even let's like, just it's get not a even, taxi. You know? It's not even like Khan should be ashamed. Mm. He's had the biggest run ever, mate. He's a fucking boss. <laughs> But the thing is, like a heavyweight, like, you don't want to be a Vander Holyfield, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Still fighting at 45, twitching, droopy face, <laughs> can't even do a press conference without lisping and stammering because you've got about eight brain cells left. He's this close to a Benoit, isn't he? He's, he's done, he's done, he's got to stop. He's got to stop, but he's still out there fighting those four round fights against fat bums. It's horrible, and you don't want to see, like, I don't want to see Khan go to tournaments and not get out the fucking <laughs> groups. It's Khan! Yeah, it's true. I don't know, but then again, I reckon he'll die when, he will not <laughs> die, as in, <laughs> as in he'll quit. <laughs> what? <laughs> not he'll die, the wrong choice of word. You quit, he'll, he's he'll, he'll, yeah, he'll yeah, die. Yeah, no. he'll, re he'll retire when CS dies. That's what I reckon. He'll go down with the boat, that sort of thing. Yeah, but then... I'm guessing he would go with CSGO. Yeah, but yeah, he's like, that's about, that's then, right, then, so he calls Town 1.6 career, CSGO comes along and announces a massive 1.6 million tournament or something. He goes, maybe I'll have one last throw of the dice, give some of the old boys... I mean, just let it go. But you saw the same with, like, Stoker 2. 
Yeah, well, exactly. We were just talking July, about it. July, no, all because we're really sad. We were yeah, we were talking about it actually off, <laughs> off air. We talked about it. like just like hey, I bet players are quit. We'll, we, if CS:GO becomes a competitive game, they will try it out. Oh yeah, Lopez said that today, didn't he? Yeah, they, and they will like continue on that boat, and perhaps even make some fucking money. So we get to the fucking quarterfinals, right? Yeah. Alternate take a map off the poles. Taz is going mental. What was he saying, Tom? He was just singling out players. When he was, when they were doing, we were, he was only going mental when they were doing well. And he was just going, Capio! <laughs> shout! Make some noise! <laughs> and Prox! Shout! <laughs> do something! He's mad. He's fucking up here, he's, he's, he's crazy. crazy. But he's the best. He's, yeah, he's, he's the a best. boss. Yeah, I love all the ball, the ball, the polish. Um, but yeah, basically, they, like they, they, <laughs> took the, they took the first map off. And I, I see, when I was in tournaments in Con, I'd rather get the shock before the finals. Yeah. Or before the semis. Quarters is a good time to get the shock yeah, off. Yeah, fuck. We need to sort it out. Yeah, time to yeah. fucking get the kick up the arse. And to be fair, in the game against Alternate, they did that because, you know, I think it was 16-9, then 16-8. Sorry, yeah, it was 16-10, 16-9, but then on the decided map, it was 16-2. Yeah. They just fucking annihilated them. Like. Yeah. So that's good. I mean, they, now, they can now go home with the mindset of, Right, we got the shot, boys, but we we got them. Yeah. We know what we can do. Still, so we're not we're not little kids. Got to be honest, I was surprised by Ultimate though, because I, I I didn't even see them getting out of the groups. I mean, even with as bad as Fnatic are now, didn't see them getting out of the groups. Neither did I. But um, it's like I like to just see the name back in action. Ultimate attacks. That was a yeah. It's old an old school name, but again, it's the old Germans at land thing. Yeah, they, that, I mean, that's why you write them off. They've gone to so many lands and done nothing in so many games. Then again, we, do we even it's know? It's not even just. Do we, do we even know the result of Mouse Sports SK? They took a map off them. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, they did. Uh, it did finish two one to SK. Oh. Before we got yeah. chucked out the venue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, it, we got chucked out the venue again while it was one nil to Mouse Sports. Loving it. Good bit of news. Yeah, is no it? Idea. We get updates <laughs> from our hotel. So, uh, and of course, win fact, we spoke to Lurpis. Yeah. Again, you'll have seen the interview by the time this airs, hopefully. Uh, Finns just get angry. I've played with Finns. They just get, when they're, when they are half down or something, they just lose it. I see him. One of them, I was watching them, the one just threw his mouse across the screen. I can't bother yeah. it. They were half down. Well, Lurpis was saying it was a communication problem, but you're saying it wasn't. It was a temperament they, problem. It is. They just get angry. They're always swearing, Finns people. They're just... I, I still stand it by it. It just sounds <laughs> like that. No, no, but I, language. I, 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 no, I know what vidu means. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, I, I still stand by, I reckon they're the nation with the best raw aim talent. I reckon that's true. Cammies used to say it all the time in COD. They are yeah, the, so why don't you see more successful team? Because, well, first of all, because they're, in any they're, game. they're, they're right. shipped off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, every National service is a fucking arsehole, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And just because... I don't know, maybe the women's fat team, they have gone lengths quickly. Yeah, true. Maybe they will just, I don't know, maybe if they stick together and carry on, they will do some damage. But right now, they just look like, SK just drilled. They are the, like, machines. Seeing some signs of weakness, uh, this event, I think, when we have the inevitable SK again final, I think I've seen enough now to definitely be... The Polish. Yeah, on board with the fucking poles, man, like 100%. Because SK have had those rounds where it's like, you know, it's like, again, like, you know, Lurpis was saying, you know, on, on save rounds, and they've killed three of them. And then they threw away 5v2s. They lost three 5v2s on one map, yeah. you know, in one the half. The poles won't lose that. The poles <laughs> will not do They've got the experience to not let that happen. So yeah. if SK are putting themselves in that situation, and they did it in the groups as well. They did it against Moscow 5, uh, where they got deagled three times and a half. <laughs> SK, for me, uh, uh, you know, phenomenal side, done really well. It's like a who's who of 1.6 history right now. It, it, an incredible roster. But they just look like they've got those weaknesses, and I do see when they meet in the final. Which I honestly believe it's going to happen 100. Uh, yeah, Na Navi did look weak this tournament as well. I was yeah. watching them. Um, they looked, and especially in the groups, uh, they, they did not look great. And they only clinched. They played Moscow five, didn't they? They only won 16-14 yeah. or something. 
like that. Like some, like it went to like the wire. And that's Na'Vi, ex world champions for a very long time. Defending champions uh, from the yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, they didn't look that great. And they've lost their spark, I reckon. As, as I was saying the other night, I just think they've had a taste of the big time, like the real big time. And as Lerpis said in that interview with us, you know, where it's like you're fighting for scraps and, you know, you, you, you put 100 hours of practice in, you couldn't win an event and your winnings, if you finish in the top three, like fucking, you know, after tax, you get $400, you know. It's just what... What is the fucking point? Yeah. So, and I, you know, they've gone from being salaried by Arbalet, apartment paid for by Arbalet, flown to every tournament that they want to by Arbalet. And sure, they've get, they've got sponsors. It ain't the same as being bankrolled mm -hmm. by a fucking millionaire, is it? Yeah, nice. No, that true. would be like if Abramovich pulled out a Chelsea. What do you think's happening? <laughs> if Sheikh Mansour just suddenly <laughs> said, you know what, Man City, don't like the colour of your shirts. <laughs> Bollocks, I'm gonna go to Arsenal. I like Wenger, he's got a pointy face. And, that, and that's it. You know, what What would happen to Man City? Those players would go, it would it, dwindle, it they would die. So. It is ultimately, like, you have no motivation for it. At the end of the day, I reckon the only people that still have the hunger to win, regardless of what money and stuff, are people like Khan. Yeah, like that. yeah. But they just, they've got the motivation. They just, they're just, <clears throat> but, you know, it's so, like the mind is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but you see, when you get those old school, like, just genuine competitors, it ain't about the, the bread, it's about being the best, isn't it? Yeah. I've seen a few people like that, Manja Kappa was like that in the UK, didn't give a fuck, just wanted to win, just wanted to win world titles, stuck by... 4K for all that time when he was having offers from all these big organisations. Not nah, want to win with 4K, want to win with this team. You do get players like that. It's rare. Yeah. It's really rare, but you know, it's, it's it's an admirable thing. And I think you're right. You know, he's he's definitely a trooper. But yeah, these, these Navi boys. No disrespect to them. Don't know enough about them as they're people. Young, they're yeah. young. Yeah, they, they've had the full. They've had the mon the full Monty, mate. They've had the, the full inclusive. That's yeah, isn't it? So and now when it's it's a lot smaller and CS is coming to a halt. Unfortunately, I, it's, I still think it's the best game in the world. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not. It's not graft. Let's let's not start this again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just unfortunate to see them lose their their sort of motivation. And uh, I reckon if they had the hunger that they had before, they were ridiculous. They, yeah. They'd take SK. Yeah, it's mad. They're the same guys. Yeah. They same part. They haven't changed yeah, at all. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's uh, just a mindset thing. So, we've got one more semi-final tomorrow, and that's again Na'Vi. I think we can gloss over that, because you think the Poles are going to win. Yeah. And then, the final? Um, ooh. S it depends on maps at the end, but I reckon SK will take, they'll take a lead. <clears throat> right, well, SK have got to veto Nuke. Because it's not, because the game just don't lose well, on it. Well, they've played it about eight times <laughs> in this event. Like, well, also, since, again, I've played it so many times, you should be able to gather them. Mm. No, well... There's limits to how many tactics they yeah, have. Yeah, but, yeah, but you've you got to think about it from inside we're, the bubble missing, of the tournament. We're missing something out. Again, mouse sports. Oh, shit. Well, mouse, no, no, mouse no, sports, no. Um, no. Yeah, they get an RV, that's what I'm saying. They get an RV, yeah. SK are already in the final. Oh, they beat right. Mousesport. So I'm saying, what SK have the advantage now is they can watch that game. And they can sleep long. If they can get, I, I, I don't know, is, is the demo going to be out that quick? Well, you'd be it wouldn't happen in any other game. It would just be Half-Life TV. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. SK can sit in their lovely hotel rooms and watch the Half-Life TV okay. of a game versus an RV. Mm. Well, they're they're not going to hold it right. they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got right. that extra edge. Which is why the tournament format is dumb and why they didn't play the both semi finals at the same time. Yeah. I don't know, but. It's not like this. Either way, I don't think. Again, aren't a team that have these super strats. They're not drilled, they're just a team. Yeah. Do what you need to do at a certain situation, and they've been together forever, really. They're, the only person they've changed in the last five years was Pasha for Luke. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> And <laughs> it, it was great as well because people used to say Pasha was like the weak link. And now everyone's like, uh, he's the best. <laughs> yeah, but, but not just, you would just say it anyway, even if it wasn't true. Because the word weak <laughs> and Pasha, it just, 
It doesn't work, mm. does it? Right, so enough enough waffle about the 1.6. Obviously, we'll talk about the final when it happens tomorrow. We're heading to the after party in a few hours. The fucking after party. Before anything's finished. On Sunday, and we're here till Wednesday. Cheers, mate. Yeah, I know. Why is that happening? Because the, the only tournament that matters is finished. I can't believe that there was an admin like laughing at me and saying, mm -hmm, of course we have the party tonight because we want to get all the girls. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> really? What is going on? I uh, know. <laughs> serious. Just got like the 1.6 no, no, the one. One. female tournament finished and they knew they'd all be there. I'll be like, no. Should we talk about 1.6 female briefly? Okay. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that briefly. Like, seriously. It's such a joke! Mm. I, want say, I want to say something first. Mm. Alright, brother. They <laughs> come in, the 1.6 girls come into a press conference, and first, like, the captain or something of United, or what they called, started beatboxing, like, really bad. That was embarrassing. And then, she started, like, apologizing for kissing a guy on stage, something like... Also embarrassing. Yeah, like saying that, I hope it was as good for you as it was for me. And the only thing they did up there, except she answered the questions Oh, did I miss this? Yeah, yeah you were well. watching 1.6, bro. 1.6. I wanted to do an interview with them. <clears throat> yeah, they came in, they did all this, and then at so the end of it, what was the worst was, they were saying to them, can you just jump up and down and giggle? And they did. No, they and, and they, they did it. it. And they filmed it. While they filmed it. Like, and, and, with and a check, <laughs> 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 What, a jiggling up and down while they filmed it? Yeah, but... Yeah, serious. And the Tom, don't shake your head. That happened. <laughs> and that's real. And several of the admins made the girls sign their backs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No joke. Yeah. If you watch behind the admins of the T the T V crew and some of the admins, they have like several sign and kisses and everything. And look, fuck all that, right? I mean look, yeah, you're really doing a great job of promoting equality and feminism in gaming if you're happy to be objectified like that. Fine, fuck you, that's pathetic, like, I don't give a fuck, right, if anyone listens to this, he's wild, he's, he's a chauvinist, that's pathetic, that is pathetic, but, but, it's their right to be pathetic, I haven't got an issue with that, what I have an issue with is what the first question was, where she was, they were talking about, um, do you feel you've established yourself as the best female Counter Strike team of all time now, and they were like, yeah, we've won it loads, it's only the female division though, that was her answer, yeah. so go play in the fucking men's, <laughs> Easy money. I would pick the easy money. No, well. yeah. I would. What self-respecting? You know what I mean? self-respecting person? What self-respecting competitor takes the easy option? Yeah. Right when you've won it like three, four, three, four times in a row. You, you what do you do? You go to the next higher level. It would be like. Right, it's like, okay, you, you, you're dominating, I've got to use an example that you'll understand, Is Jonas. That same, say you're a tennis player. No, oh, no, no, he's going to go tennis, I was going to Starcraft, go well, on. No, say you're in a tennis player and you go for like a B tournament, <clears throat> yeah. or a smaller tournament, like a local or tournament. playing in the seniors. Yeah, you, you won maybe three grand winning it, but you can now compete in the big one, but you won't win any money, because you won't ever progress that far into it. Yeah. So just stick to the B tournament, because that's all you care about is the money. So why are you playing tennis? Why don't you get an office job? It's just, what? it's just disgusting. I, I, I cannot abide it. And the thing is as well, what, what, like, so what I find really galling about it all is, the attention it generates, because- That's it, stupid. I agree. Yeah, but it is. That, it is. Right, if you want to look at women in tight fitting clothes, I can tell you, there's these, I don't know if anyone's heard of the internet, <laughs> right, but if you've heard, I know, yeah, there's this thing, right, called the internet, and it was invented for the sole purpose of being a, yeah, of finding pictures of women in tight fitting clothes, and occasionally, and this might shock you boys, sometimes they've got no clothes. <laughs> no, I, I shit you not, I fucking shit you not. I, so if you want that, I don't need a narrative, I don't need them to play a game that I like to do it. Just, just do a fucking nudie calendar, you'll make more money. Don't come to my tournament and take prize money away from people who actually give a shit about competing in the field. And then, and then when you're asked to jump up and down and giggle for photo, I, fucking kill me now. Why is that happening, Tom? I don't know. Alright, cause there's, there's just lack of so social interaction from these guys <laughs> that attend these events. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a straight up truth. My yeah. bet is that that clip will never hit the internet. That will stay in that guy's basement, for sure. Fuck <laughs> it, <laughs> I wish he'd stayed in his basement. <laughs> anyway, right, that was day three.
But that, you must go. Another thing. I don't know. <laughs> that was they did. Another thing. There's another thing. Go on. Can't tell we were going to say something. We were going to punch on a topic that was important. Were we? I can't well, then I just got out of control on FIBA. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to be able to play this back and be like, fuck. We mentioned that the Dota 2 tournament has started. Not that I know anything. Shit, we should do. We should do. Christ, we cover so much. Right, yeah, Dota 2 started, and uh, all I really know, I, I, I'll be honest, folks, today was a fucking blur. I didn't have time to follow it, but what I do know is the Danish team, Monkey Business, uh, really fucking just uh, caught everyone off guard in their group, and they went for a clean sweep. They finished with five wins out of five games played. And uh, another thing is that hot favourites. Another thing is that the Asian team. I'm not sure which Asian country they're from. I can't remember. Um, they play with no headphones. Yeah, shit. What team is that? Um, I don't know. They've got their own mouse pads. That's all I know. I can't remember. E home. Possibly. It was like a. We're talking like Singapore or something yeah. like that. It's uh, Ehome, or like, oh, what's the other team called again? Oh. I don't know, either way, they play with no headphones, they play with no sound. Yeah, they don't use they, any comms, they, do they? they just talk to each other. They talk to each other like they're just in person, and they have a manager as well, mm. behind them, and the use of that is he communicates with them as well, he has a broad grasp of all five. I don't know if it works. No, I don't know if it works. That's how it should be, I think, in eSports e anyway. You should have a manager behind you who's like telling you, right, we need to switch this around. And, uh, they have, good uh, teams do that. E home was for like a, a year and a half the best Dota team, if I remember correctly, so it must work. It must be e home because they're pretty. If they've got their own pad, they've got their own skill series. Like fucking crowd. clothing range, well, man. It's mad the out there. One of the Dota teams who bought up like a billionaire in China. Yeah. So it could be that team, I just don't remember what it's called. There wasn't many Asian teams at this event, I remember I seeing that. Well... GoToGamer.com Don't say that on the Cadwin mm. podcast. Right, I'm just gonna end it now, Joanna, she killed it. Right, um, so yeah, that was the, the end of day three. Uh, it's, we're only halfway. Source begins tomorrow. Not that anyone apart from us seems to care about it. Um, we'll also have some gossip from the after party, which we're, we're now pre-drinking to go to. I did vow I wasn't going to drink this event, but fuck me, <laughs> it's been so <laughs> traumatic. Hopefully you guys will forgive me if I spend a couple of hours hungover. So, uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed the coverage, hope you've enjoyed this, and um, we'll be back tomorrow, no doubt, with more tales of woe and horror from here at ESWC. Coming up next. Coming up next. And that's the halfway point of the audio diary we kept during our time ESWC. Um, we'll put the rest of it out in a few days. Hopefully it's been illuminating and given away a bit more about what was going on behind the scenes while as well as talking about the big issues. Kind of in one. Not too sure if you guys have been enjoying it, but we did say we were going to try different stuff. And obviously, the normal podcast will resume next week if you're thinking this is a terrible experience. But if you do want to listen to the podcast in the next few days, that's going to come out. It's going to have the reaction to Jonas's arrest, uh, which I'm sure you'll have read about. It even made Rakaka headlines, where they also accused him of some other stuff that wasn't true, which was uh, extremely amusing. Um but yeah, uh, basically it's going to deal with all the CSS stuff as well, and it's going to have a final summary. So that will be out in the next few days once I've got all the sound files together. Um, but after that, it will just be the normal podcast as you know and love it. So uh, until then, uh, do tune in, make sure you download it, and it will also be available on YouTube. And thanks very much for listening. The Catred.org Podcast, your weekly guide to the world of esports news, presented by Richard Lewis.